I'm going to show a way I found that works to onion skin individual elements while animating in Krita. Here is a face that I drew rather quickly and I started transforming this into a car that was also quickly sketched. And if I turn on onion skinning on this animation, you'll see that it gets rather convoluted. There's a lot of stuff going on. You can hardly see which goes where. In this animation, I've already been using a lot of layers to plan out several of the movements. But I now want to animate one more element and it would be handy if I could onion skin just that one element. So I'm going to turn onion skin off on my main layer, layer one. I'm going to add a new layer. Frame zero is basically going to be empty, so I'm just going to throw an empty frame in there. Then on frame one, I'm going to throw another empty frame in there and I need to copy uh, what I need to animate. I'm going to make the hair that's over here, which I will now trace by activating the onion skin in the animation layer and going over it. And I'll use Control Z a lot because it's really hard to just draw right over it. So I have somewhat traced that shape. It's nowhere perfect. And so now that piece of hair is there, rather wobbly. I'm going to my last frame where I have the car and again turning on onion skin on layer one I see where that thing should go. Now my hair is also still there so I need to throw an empty frame in there and trace that little cloud. That was much easier. So now if I turn off the onion skin on this layer and turn on the onion skin on my new layer, I see the hair and the cloud. So if I go halfway in between to do a breakdown and I add a new frame there, I now see what I need to transform into what exactly and I can make an in-between shape. Now there's all kinds of stuff floating through this space in the animation, so I probably want to transform this into something that's out here somewhere, some kind of something that's in between the hair shape and the cloud. That may be a bit too thick, so let's do something like this. So we've got a breakdown going from one to the other. And then going halfway between those and adding yet another frame, I can now see I have to go from this shape to that shape. So I will figure out a way to make that happen. So it should probably go a little bit like this. And then yet going halfway between there, but I'm going to actually go closer to my um, in-between frame. So I have kind of have a little ease in here. Make yet another frame. Now I need to go between this one and that one. And again, I'm going to be somewhere halfway in between. Something like that. And then I'm just going to fill up the in-between frames. I have two red frames now. And I have to go between the previous and the next, or between the last red one and the first green one. That's not quite right. Again, let me control C a couple of times. and so on. I'm going to add more frames in between. But this allows you to onion skin just a single element. And not the blank frame. And I'm pretty close to where the original was. And if I play that, you'll see the beginning of the movement is already there and then it stops because I don't didn't paint those frames yet. So let me just start painting all the other frames in.
So I now have all my frames painted in. I can see what that looks like. Well, it sort of works. It's screwed, but it works. So you notice that the first, if I just show the layer I just created, the first frame and the last frame are actually uh, empty on this. It shows the last frame as a continuation of the previous frame, obviously. I could put a blank frame there and you see there's not actually a last frame there. So this is now a separate layer with the new element that's just which I could onion skin separately and still see nicely what the movement is on this part. Now once I'm done and I'm happy with it I can actually right click on that layer and say merge with layer below and it just becomes part of the animated sequence. That didn't quite go that well. I have to turn the layer on to merge it with the layer below. There we go. It merges with the first visible layer below. And then there's just a few more elements to animate and I'll have my guy transform into a car. And next time I'll take more time to make my keyframes because I've been working way longer on the transformation than on the creation of those two silly keyframes.